Okay, I'm going to do a quick intro. Hey, what's up, everybody? We're going to get right to it. I am with Jordy Johnson from Carbon Fusion, and he wanted to learn how to do an owl today. I was going to make a video about this, and then Jordy had the great idea of just saying, why don't we go live? We're going to do cut for cut. He's going to follow lead. I'm going to, or I'm going to lead. He's going to follow, and we're just going to do it together. And, and for this video, for you guys who are going to watch this, guys, girls, everybody, whoever wants to watch this, this is just going to be a how to carve owl block out start to finish. It's going to take about an hour and a half. Hopefully, I think possibly even the block brothers are coming. Uh, Kevin and Doug, uh, they should be here. Uncle Kevin, that's his YouTube page. It's going to be soon. And then Douglas Fur, his YouTube page will be in maybe in like a couple of years when he figures out how to use it. Sorry, that's just a little inside dig. Um, but that's the plan. So. Hopefully people will watch and hopefully it's awesome. I will be continually checking to see the comments, but Jordy, Carving Fusion, check them out. We've done videos together. You guys love them. I love them. We are, uh, we are in a COVID friendly zone. We're outside. We're doing good and game on. Come on in, bro. We're live. Jordy got his new Saw Valley shirt today. Yes. Oh, I got to wear my new Saw Valley shirt because my wife. Oh, I don't show my big belly. Oh. <laughs> Your face, big <laughs> my, uh, my wife made my uh, tie dye uh, St. Patrick's Day. Oh, St. Patty's Day. St. Patty's Day. Okay. So, this is just a, let's say, for give or take for anyone who wants to do one of these, I would say maybe 22 to almost two feet. Uh, about a foot wide and about a foot, a foot in this way and a foot this way. And it's just a nice chunk of cedar. It's going to crack. Everybody asks about cracking wood cracks. Don't worry about it. We're just going to carve it. We're going to have fun and we're going to do it real time. So let's do it. Enough talking. If you are watching this, let's rock it. You. Oh, can you see me? Am I, am I even out of the screen? Oh no. Yeah, that's okay. They can hear you. Oh no. Yeah. There we go. Well, whatever, we're live, so let's go. Game on. Let's get her done. Here we go. Hey, everybody. Woo. Okay. All right, here we go. Here we go. Let's get your side and my side. So I am making a video for my channel for this too for you guys. Yeah, and I'm going to pull back. So both of us are in there. And I'm going to shift mine like this so you guys can see every cut. I'm going to do it like this. Uh, holy, that's heavy. So I'll carve here. Let me see. That'll work. And then, Jord, you carve. Hey, Jord, can you look at the shot just to make sure we're – I want to get it as, as much space for you. Oh, you so I'm here. There? I'm here. Is, that, is this in camera? That's perfect. Perfect. And, see, and you're in camera. Okay, cool. That's perfect. So maybe you twist yours out like this a bit, uh, and we'll go back to back. Like that? So then that's Okay. Oh yeah, you gotta switch yours over a bit. Yeah, so maybe put your camera like here. Can you do it for me? So Absolutely. Oh that's a nice cam. So you want mostly the uh, the bird, right? In your hands? Or do you want my head. Okay. Uh you're good. You're good. That's literally your your shot is there, up. Your shot okay. is here, to about here. Okay, perfect. Okay, are you? I'm framed in. You want to check it out? And I'll be here. Is that how chainsaws make? Okay, let's get going, guys. I'm gonna flip on the GoPro here for uh for Jordan. We got 25 people. Woohoo! Hey everybody, hi friends, hi friends, so let's go, I'm using Echo 501P 14 inch Canon dime tip bar with a quarter pitch chain 050 gauge, a lot of people have been asking about the micro chain, I don't use that very often, Ooh. keep your chains loose, keep your chains loose, right, keep this. Okay, time warp. Let's go. Okay, so block out first cut is uh is this. 
Tunes on. Oh, yeah. Shit. I guess I don't have tunes. All right. That's fine. We'll just step back, cut that out, and stop it right there. Perfect. Okay. So, now I go like this. Ah. Just so, peop so people can see it, I go like this. And now, that's essentially my side profile punch out, right? And what's up, Steve Kinzora's in the house. I love it. I hope Steve does a page. You guys check him out. He's hey, awesome. Steve, what's up, Steve? <laughs> Come Zora, Zora. He'll one day get Kinzora right. Yeah, he's watching. Okay. And um, Steve taught me how to do spirit faces. Awesome. I remember in chat when it was awesome. awesome. So now that I've got this profile, um, I like to shape out the wings. Now, just for like anyone who's doing it, you know, you got to think like, okay, the head's here. You're just thinking shapes, shapes and planes and stuff like that. And, and I always like to bulk out the feathers a bit here because you're thinking about how your, your arms and the wings are out, right? So you punch it out here, and then you can have like either small tail feathers. There's not a lot of room here. Normally, I make it longer, and I make the tail feathers drawn out. Looks more cool. But this is a smaller, condensed little great horn. And we'll just make them tucked in. Simplistic. So this will be the end of that. And then here. So I'm going to go like this. I'm going to cut, and then I'm going to cut it down. 
And, and as I pull back here, as I cut away this, I'm going to taper in because obviously you got your jaw horses here. You don't want to like hit that because it sucks. But once you're starting to cut in, you can pull back your tip of your bar and then cut that out later. So here, I'll show you guys right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just watch it. So this is what I do. I mean, I'm thinking right now because I always carve my birds looking like this way because all the hard work you're putting in, especially in beginners, a lot of people, you know, if you're just beginning carving, you're a lot of times I'll see like a bird looking straight. Now, a bird looking straight to me is kind of like, it's okay. It's not the greatest because the reason is if it's looking straight, this part of the feather pattern is not that exciting to look at. And the back wing, this part, how you lay your feathers in, that's the hardest part. And that's the most work and that's the most detail. So if you crank the head back, which owls can do almost a three, like a, a 180 with their, with their necks, that you you then make your piece looking backwards but he's looking and it looks rad you're showing off your work you're making the head look good that's kind of what i'm going for when i'm thinking about this so first cut this part doesn't really matter as much right now i'm just thinking okay the head's here i'm gonna cut this out and start shaping in the wings <laughs> about the head now because I'm at that point. This is a great horned owl. A barred owl is easier. A great horn, you got to go like like this, right? It's like a triangle. <laughs> And now I can work with that because this is going to come down and there is the top of the feather and then I can start to recess in here. So now I know, okay, I've got uh, the head. Sorry, we'll do this as quickly as I can. I'm going to jump ahead a bit. So now I know right now, this is like kind of my, my feather pattern right here. I hope you guys can see it. Or not feather pattern, the beak. So then this is like your half circle and your half circle. So right now, there's your wing. So I'm going to cut something here and then shape this part out. We'll do mine. Give her. You're good. You just do it. Go for it. I'll wait. Yeah. So, like, you're thinking, like, straight and then out. And then, and then taper that in here. Because you're thinking, like, your bird's going to be like this. So that's kind of, if you want, you can use mine. So just do, you can use any of my bars. Yeah, go for it, bud. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So like this cut goes first, boom, out. There you go. Yeah. Now, now punch in the shoulder. But just remember that this is metal here. So you're just tapering out this part. Yeah, it's like the it's like this. Now, 
for your head. Where do I stop this cut? Okay. You, you fluff it out. Just keep her going. Okay, so now you've got essentially like a nice little punch out. And uh, so I'll punch in the wing now. Because now you can like start to almost shape, right? Remember when you're carving, you're thinking about blocking. Blocking is number one. Don't start carving to form yet. Like uh, like you're, 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 you start carving and you're already thinking, oh, I got to lay in the feathers. No, no, no. Get your form right. That's my personal opinion. I stand by it. Any other carvers who do it differently, awesome. That is totally your call. This is how I do my stuff. Draw horses are great because you can, I'm going to be working at the back, so why not like carve it so you don't hit the metal? <laughs> so there you go. So there's like essentially like a big body. This is going to have a base here. So I'm going to do like the wings kind of like this. There we go. did there for Jordy is I cut in the different layers of what I'm going to be doing back here. So this is tail feathers. I like to always connect it into the chest. The wings can go here. And remember, this is just like a quick car fun owl. Like you can do them characteristics. You can do them with like, uh, you know, Archimedes. That's that I'm going to do a video uh, next week about that. Like adding characteristics into cartoon figures into your carving. This one, because Jordan wants to do a realistic one. That's what we're doing. Um, yeah, hit it and, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get Jordy going. So you want to get do an undercut here. Okay. We'll go over here. Okay. So undercut your face is like this. Cause this is okay. We got to come down. Okay. Uh, do this. Okay. So that's kind of like the beak, and now we'll go like this. So we can make yours a little more elongated because this is the this is the the tough. And you're gonna have to just work that in. It's gonna take a little bit, but it's okay. And then don't cut this out. This here, 
are not here. Those are your feather, your your feather tops. Or uh, come up. Oh, that's how you did it. Okay, my bad, my bad. Yeah. Okay. So now, come up here and try to like, you want the wings to be coming down. Like, yeah, like, like cut it in this way. Taper it like a, Yeah. Okay. Now, you see this? How this is kind of like square? Start to shape that in because, like, you never want to have like a blocky form. You want it to be soft. So imagine that here it's coming down. The tail, the wings are here, and then the tail feathers are down here. So just do one swooping line all the way down, creating shape. Both. So, now, now start to taper this in to the tail feathers. Okay. Tail feathers. You want to make this. A little diamond, a diamond down here. So this is your wing. And this will be your tail feathers. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. And so the same. Yeah. So like wing is like this. Now take a notch and notch this out because these are your tail feathers. Okay. So you want to kind of like begin to. capture the more of the back now and then you do like the accent line here okay you have a car oh perfect okay oh, okay
And then you can do like another one here. But now, you just undercut that. You're doing great. Doing great, buddy. So we'll we'll start to punch in this face. Now, one thing I, I always look for too is uh, when I'm doing these carvings, guys and girls, is I always look to try to keep this part balanced. So Jordy's got a little bit here. We're gonna get it balanced and but we haven't even begun to push this back. This is the furthest point out. So we then take it and we're gonna scoop it out. I'll do it with this side. You scoop it out and you give it a nice little like fluffy tuft to it. It looks rad, very effective, and and really will help like step up your owls to the next level. Do I separate my body from my back uh, wing? No, tail, no, you tail? don't. When when feathers are sitting on top of each other, they're very like, it's just like our like us like this. You know, you see a lot of guys like like Uncle Kevin. He does what we call my wife calls spook owls, and they're like super dramatic. Like it's a uh, this is in like an inch and a half. Like there's no thing. We're just trying to lay feathers on top of each other. That's kind of like what I'm going for here. Cut here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're going to do that right now. Well, you got yours here. 
Because yeah, right this Eric, is just like putting in. No, but the, this cut right here, you've already done yours. Like this 45 right here. You're there. We're on the same page. No, we're not. Just slightly off. It. You've done it. All right. You got this cut. You got your cut slices. If you see it, get it done. <laughs> if you see her, get her done. Just get her done. Yeah, he's talking about this. So I started to shake the head. So, let's work in the face. So one thing to think about, as I'm telling Jordy, when you're using your carving bar, this is your pencil, right? It's just like anything. It's like if you're doing a Dremel. You know, I, when you're trying to cut out and remove stuff, I like to just use my tip and just fluff the throttle 
and and just chip away as I'm cutting like so so like right here <laughs> And you're just slightly undercutting and you're creating layers, right? And changing the, the, the perspective. Do. Yeah, you gotta do this side, but just so you know, like, you got a little bit here, I would say, like, thin that out. Now, come at it, yeah, like that. Yeah. Watch your chip. Watch your chip. from his neck, right? Like, yeah, like that. Just go with that line. Yeah. 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 Hey, very nice. Very nice, very nice, very nice. This is a nice block out. We're only 35 minutes in or something like that. And there's 80 people watching. Right. Yeah. Um, okay, so we're 80. We're, we're how many how many minutes in? With two people carving, we are 38 minutes in. And we're kind of done blocking out. I got to spend a few minutes on mine just like getting it to where I'm more a little shaped out. Like I'm going to start working this part now. So the center part here, this is kind of your boring part, but you do want to showcase like where the wings transition from, from the, how they lay on each other. And then the chest is kind of mellow. If you are going to punch out the, the feet, like if you're going to go, okay, we're going to do this, we're going to do this, we're going to do this, and then have like claws here, you can do that very easily. You can also do it with chainsaw or you don't have to do it at all you can just do if you're if you're just learning what's easy what's it's simple it's just to do for, like like feather fur tufty fur all the way down and then just pop out two or three talons two is sometimes how owls actually uh stand so you can get away with two i've done tons of owls like that primarily because i'm lazy but that's also like you know that that is a good quick way but three is how they do it and then they have their one at the back but if you're not going to be punching negative space in, we'll just keep it simple. We'll make him a solid standing owl. So it'll it'll work good. Okay, here we go. Let's uh let's let's do that. Yeah, cool, dude. You're doing great.
kind of how the block out goes and carving to form because that's what we're doing we're starting to carve to form now it's time to start detailing now what I thought about that I didn't explain to you guys earlier was that I, this can be very boring but when you do want to step it up into a more advanced kind of uh, owl think about bones movement chest so I start thinking, okay, I got the chest here, the rib cage is here, the torso comes down, the feet, they always taper in. And you'll see then, I, I'm going for legs. Jordy doesn't have to. He can keep his simple and just do the claws and fur it out. But just out of my own, like, head. I want to try legs, too. Okay, cool. Do heads, too. Do that. So I like to make it so it's kind of like it's got that puffy chest right here and then tapers down to, like, a triangle, v, like a V almost. And then I'll push out the legs. And then if I really commit, then I might do like negative space underneath. You've seen it in a ton of my other videos where I punch in negative space. I don't think I'm going to do that here. We don't have the room. For simplistic form, that's what we're doing. It's just I like to do a V, and then I make two little cylinders, which are going to be the legs, and then we'll punch out the claws. Super simple, chainsaw only, and a little bit of Dremel at the end. But... We're at the point now where it's time to start refining and shaping. And what I like to do is I make it soft. I remember I was in, uh, actually, I was with Carbon with Kenzora, and we were at the Canadian Championships, and, and uh, a Mary, she came up to me afterwards and said, you know, like, your, your sculpture was cool. It was good. It was nice. But it was too rough. Like, it's too jagged. And I, and I found that to be, like, something that it really stuck with me is, is, is you want to have your sculptures, like, not just ba 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 like, like, very jaggedy, kind of, like, when, when you start to go into something more, my point is, soften things. That's what I should just got to the fucking point. Oh, got to the point. I didn't get there. So don't demonetize me, YouTube. Um, you just want to soften things. It doesn't have to be jagged or a dramatic change, you know? Things fold on each other. People, like, when you're moving, there's... There's flow and movement and essence in anything you're carving. Same for animals, bears, eagles, owls, dragons, you name it. You want to finish yours while you're live or you want to work on my turn? Because I've got to play catch up with you. But yeah, just start carving, bro. I'll, I'll, I'll watch you. So here's what you're doing. You're starting to shape in the chest. You're right with me. You shape in the chest and then just do a V here. You're doing a V, like this is your neck, your head, you know, the head's kind of like this. There you go. Chest comes down here, and then these are your legs, you know, and they always come. And then just lose this. This just, you're softening it in. That's what you're doing. So I'll just keep going, but anytime I'll stop and I'll help you out. Okay. Because we got we to gotta get her done. Okay, 72 people still. Yee-hoo! 45 minutes in. All right, guys. So I'm going to move into laying in the feather pattern. Pitted patter, stop talking, Ryan. Get out of I know. Feathers, we're going to keep them very simple. I'm not going to get into, like, 
actually really trying to do it. Um, when you want, like I was saying earlier, this book is fantastic. This book tells you everything. Oh, my God. 
Okay. Hey. Go. So now it's just like we said, it's time to start thinking about. And this is like what, this is a perfect example. No, it's okay. It's, it's now it's about softening. So softening your edges, smoothing everything out, right? So there's a couple things you can fix. Yeah, I just don't see what, really what's going on. Yeah. Like so this is the chest. These are the legs. So okay. they're a little deep it out here. Like the legs are attached to the wings. There, it looks like they're attached to the wings, but that's an easy fix. Okay. That's just. <laughs> so everybody knows what we're talking about. So you just want to kind of like start to begin to soften things up. Now what I mean by soften things up is like this. difference it is when you just start softening it up and like making it all flow yeah you just shape and flow like that's all you got to think so like here is now that leg makes sense now this leg makes sense when you just do the same thing so you're just trying to like and this owl is looking up which is really cool it's it's looking good. So I think now, this is your. That's easy fix, right? What do you do? No, you just. You just shape it to the like the shape it's going to. And, and honestly, like with this side, it doesn't matter as much as this side because everybody's going to be looking at this. So, just... Uh, now, you can kind of start to think about... You've got a good shape. I would say that this needs to come down a bit because it looks like the Couple tail feathers are down. A this way. Yeah. Yeah, I would take the saw and kind of like run it. One smooth cut. You're just thinking like smooth. You know, even if it's wrong, smooth is still nice. Yeah. Yeah, nice. So if you want, if you want, you can leave it such a nice solid base or you can cut it out like I did. I just, I can't help but do it. So you go like this, you go, okay. When you do this, when you do this cut, you imagine, when you're doing this cut, you're imagining that your, uh, this is the stump, right? So the tail's hanging off. So I always think tapering it just like this, but I'll try to push it out. Like I try to make that the furthest point that you see. I taper it like that. Now for here, okay, so claws are going to be here. 
His back talons are going to be here. So this is kind of where I would think to go. And I'm going straight across, just like a block out, punch out. You're, you're straight across. And I like to imagine where this part of the chain is. That's the most important, important part when you're doing a plunge cut, to me. Did I go like this, okay? See that? Perfect! <laughs> but imagine like the whole time you're watching the top of the bar tip pushing through and you just like feel it as it goes. Don't push too hard. You'll blow the tips out. I did that. Then I come down. And then I go like this. Imagine where the feathers are going to be. And there you have a lot more negative space. And you've instantly brought your piece to like a little more. <laughs> I sure am, Charles. <laughs> So I got this given to me years ago, and this has always been something for me where I'm like, oh, wow, you know what? Like, people do very big claws, very big anime. This is a great horned owl's foot. Uh, I got this given to me 15 years ago. I don't even know, and I was like a little kid, and I just for some reason have kept it. Um, but this goes to show you how big they really are. So they're not too big. So when you're doing something like that, you just have to think, okay, these come out, these things are deadly, like, but that's just how big they are. So they're not huge, don't overthink it, and, and just, just have, like, just have fun creating the accent. Ah. Come up. Yeah. yeah, because feathers lay on top of each other, right? Yeah. Okay. So, let's do a cross horse. A cross course on quick feathers, okay? I use my board tip for either side. Boom, 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 boom. Ready?
This one, I did this.
Okay. So that's quickly how we lay in the feathers. And uh, and that's kind of how I go about doing it. With 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 what I do with the uh, the textures, this I could either use an angle grinder and clean it out smooth, or I can use my chainsaw and just run lines like Tommy Craig showed me a really cool way where he just he just runs lines on each feather and it creates a different like texture and it looks awesome. So this is basically the back. Now we move into the front and we'll do the claws, the talons, and then uh, this. And then guess like who shows up is the Block Brothers. So uh, we'll show you, introduce you to the Block Brothers are here. Ke Uncle Kevin, hey buddy. In the house. How's it happening? Going? Good. Good. And Douglas Fur. There's Douglas Fur in the uh, truck. Uh, and then they got Beechwood. Oh, geez. Here we go. Uncle Kevin's bringing Beechwood. Oh, nice. Too lazy, to take it out. too lazy to take it out, and it gets <laughs> left at my shop. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. Kevin's here for the weekend. Doug is going back, so we've all been in a work bubble, so it's kind of COVID, COVID safe, just so everybody knows. Hey, Rick. Hey, Glenn. So we're just going to finish this up. I'm going to finish this up right now. Jordy is going to be a little bit behind, but I just want to get this done, um, and he'll have a video out tomorrow or the next day. So in this part now, I you can do different styles. So... You can use your saw and just like run it across and do that like fluffy look. How are you feeling? Feeling okay? Good. What are you at? Dad can coach you too. Yeah, I'm just trying to keep up with you. So I always do my feathers like this. And you can do your feathers for the chest a couple of different ways, and I'll show you guys right now. Here we go. Hey, Charles. two simple ways just chatter chatter up 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 looks cool when it's done i kind of like to keep doing what i do here i go under Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay. So now you're at the point where you are into nice job, dude. Yeah, this is great. It's awesome. It's good, dude. It's great. It's really nice. Hey, 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 hey. Um, yeah, it looks good. It looks good. So, one thing I think about when I'm doing these faces is, uh, let me just make sure I'm framed up here. So when I start to do the faces, as you saw there earlier, I use my tip and I scoop it out. I scoop this out and then I'll do this. And I'm just trying to like create the idea of the feathers fluffing out. Now when you're carving, if you're just beginning and it's really hard to do, you can do that with a Dremel. You can do it with a finger sander. It just with chainsaw, it comes with a bit of practice, but it's really fast. So here's an idea of how I can lay in the feathers that I do. Hey, dog, just don't post any pictures of that, please. Okay. go so that's pretty much it for me for chainsaw so we got we got uncle kevin over here helping uh helping jordy getting the eyes going but i'm just gonna work on my piece now and we're gonna just finish this off so we've been here for 82 minutes thanks for everybody hanging in there so now we're gonna get the t power tools okay ryan show the book again yeah no problem so this book I got on Amazon. He makes a ton of different books. His name is Denny Rogers. I've never had the pleasure to meet the artist. He's fantastic. So this book was the best money I've spent. I think I paid 29 US dollars and it has barn owls, barred owls, and great horned owls, which are my favorite birds, birds to carve. And then he has an eagle book, but it's extremely hard to find. I had to find it on some like niche carving. If you go on Amazon, it's like, two hundred dollars or something so obviously don't buy that and then uh there's a bird of prey one which is good it's red tail hawk uh falcon and peregrine and and one other one and they're really nice they're fun they're good but this is great because this book will show you different positions so like i've had fun just like on off days where i've opened up this book and just been like okay close my eyes i'm opening this one and this is the, the exact one I would carve. 
or or this one and, and I would do the wing like out you know like you're just kind of trying to change it up so but it also has this every single feather every single way how the feathers lay on each other how the backs lay it explains why how all that stuff and it really helps you when you're really trying to get into more realism so this is uh Denny Rogers and you can find it on Amazon. I'm actually starting an Amazon store. I, I applied today, so an affiliate thing. So anything I buy, people will be able to uh, see once I figure out how to use it, because I actually don't know how to use it. <laughs> so I'm in the part now where I'm going to use the finger sander, and, uh, and then I'm gonna punch in the eyes really quickly, and I'm gonna punch in, uh, that's it, eyes, beak, and then I'm done. Burn it, sand it, done. Okay, so this is the new, this is the new finger sander that Makita just came out with. It is awesome. I, I know I am like sponsored by them, but in comparison to their other one, it's insane. It's way smaller here. It gets in it's fast. It's great. No cords. So I do the same thing with the chainsaw. And I just start working in like the first layer. I'll do this eye here. Shape the beak. And then I'll do like a little spot for the, the uh, whatever you call it. <laughs> Same thing you do with the chainsaw, except you're doing it with the finger sander. So it just depends. And you're just creating the accents of it, right? You don't need to go crazy. Hey, hey, don't have fun. I'm live right now. I want this to be monetized. So there we go. So I try to get the face balanced, right? So now I'm here, get this balanced. I'm gonna bring it closer so you guys can see it, or just put it on an angle. So I look like for this, I'm like, okay, this is a little further in. I know I can just shape that out. Get that balance. At this point now, you're just trying to create balance. For me with the feet, I'm keeping it super simple. I'm just gonna roll this over it, draw down a little line here, create the accent of the feathers, or of the talons. And then I just go like this, where I'm just going slightly over it, give it some texture, no big deal. Don't overthink it. Just cutting it out and then drawing it down, and then you do a little line there, and then you burn it and sand it, because really, it doesn't matter, this is just a quick carve, and it's and what you're doing is just creating the idea of what is there. You know, you can spend a day doing the proper talons if you wanted, and if you have time, by all means, do it. But, for me, we're doing this live, and I want to get her done. And, uh... Maybe go fishing. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love your idea. Nice towel. Thanks, buddy. I love them. Thank you. So there we go. 
Now it's just a matter of grabbing the Dremel, and I'm going to punch in the eyes real quick. You guys can watch that. I'm going to use the uh, cone bit, and uh, where is it? There it is. So like I've said before, guys and girls, is I have a broken Dremel. <laughs> <laughs> I need new Dremel. Dremel needs to send me some more stuff. Holy moly. Give me a break. All this broken shit. Yeah, no, we're good. They just need to get the picture. Start... Oh, yeah. There we go. Oh, man, I love it, man. Nice setup, man. Thanks, dude. Yeah, man. Ugh, there we go. This is a working man's trailer, boy. Thank you, buddy. Oh, just lost that. Oh, there it is. Okay, one second, everybody. I'll be right with you. I had to switch over the drum. I apologize. Oh, and this Dremel's broken, too. Insane. All my Dremels are broken. Okay, guys, here we go. So this is the final part right here. I'm going to zoom in. Oh, there's Jackie boy. Jackie boy. Jackie boy's here. Come here, Jack. Come here. You guys all know Jack. If you follow my page, he comes begging for food every day. Steals my lunch, literally. Jack, get out of there. Such a rascal. He's such a rascal. Okay. So right now. Here's my bit, guys. Uh, it's the Dremel cone. Hopefully you can see that. And this is what I use for the eyes. So right now, I'm at the point where I'm just going to punch in power lines. That's what I call them. The power lines are this. The difference between the barred owl and the great horn is great horn have kind of the oval eyes. Um, if, if, if you're doing a barn owl, you can get away with just punch. You can get away with just using an eyeball bit and punching them in. But since I have this already here, you already know the face is like that. So I'm just gonna go shape the shape the eye socket out. Just like that. Now let's shape it. Now we'll do an eye. And an eye like this. And I connect them. Is that zoomed in enough? Okay, I'll zoom in a bit more. There we go. So, you've got the shape. Now, now I'm going to shoot this away. I just like use that to scoop in the eyelid. There we go. I'm gonna do it like this, make it look it. I think about where it's going. There it is. So for the beak, I'm gonna create a line down here. I'm going to do a line here. Switching sides, same thing. Create your half shell circle. Now look at my this bar. I was down low. That was come up. There we go.
Now uh, step back, have a look. Looks pretty good. Now uh, punch in the eye. Point here, up. Down. Stop. Same thing, start at the point again. Dra drag that point through. Then I do the eye, and I'll do a circle, half circle. Sorry, I'll have to be in the way. I'll do this just for like accent and burning when it when I burn it and sand it. Just to just throw a little bit extra. A little more depth. Just for like quick cardboards. So you look at it now, pretty well balanced. Do a big nostril, nostril there, do the feet here. Sign it. Now I'll get the blowtorch and just burn it. We're going to burn the heck out of it because cedar, it a dark brown cedar like this allows itself for a lot of, uh, a lot of contrast in sanding and it'll show it. So I'm just going to take this big tiger torch and, uh, and burn it. So we'll pull it back out here and drop her down. Oh, yeah. Thanks, Duger. Trying to make me look good. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> big fun. Okay, I'll show you guys a couple of tricks, and uh, hopefully I have sandpaper in here. Probably not, because I never fill it with sandpaper. Okay, one second, guys. I'll be right there. Yeah, you talk, Jordy. Looks good. Okay, you get sandpaper. Because I'm out of a hundred, super annoyed, but that's okay. Oh, and I just broke this thing. Oh, that sucks. Let's see if I can. Oh, that's not good. I got my drill. It's not the high speed one, but it's still. You got it. Yeah. That's fine. Of course, I break this. Yeah. You're stepping on it too much. Oh yeah. That's annoying. That's annoying. Classic. So, Jordan has his, luckily. So I'll show you guys a trick while we're here and we're waiting. Um, so once I sand this, it'll pop. It's going to have like that, that contrast color. Okay, here comes George. So we'll get this thing. Yeah, it's the wall, whatever. What can I do? Let's get her done.
Oh, dude. Don't break that. So in distance, getting this done fast, I'll show you guys a quick trick that I use with flame. Um, that 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 is good because one thing about doing owls is they have those textured feathers, right? So you've got. Um, uh, 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 like a, like a brown to a different. So I always, I, when I'm in a hurry, I, well, when I'm not in a hurry, I use my airbrush or spray paint. But when I'm in a hurry, I just do this. And that creates the lines, right? So you can do that real easy. And then you have your lines to as to what the actual owl would uh, have. And you can use that for, for almost any piece. And uh, it really emphasizes a lot of the, the contrast. And then here I'll go, because these beaks are black. So I like to do black beaks. And then I'll do like a little outer ring here. And just get the outer ring of it black. And then do the claws. And, uh, and that's it. So once you stain it, it's good, it's finished. And uh, we're going to get to wrap this up. So Jordy's going to finish his video. He's going to uh, post it tomorrow or the next day. Tomorrow. And so this is basically a very quick owl, quick carve. You know, you'll sell it for, I'd sell this probably 400 bucks. And um, this, this is a great way for beginners to just watch, learn. If you if you watch this, uh, watch it again. If you remember something, come back to it. I'm always here. Leave a comment or a question if you have any questions, and um, and definitely like click the next video because I've got tons of other videos where you guys can watch Jordy carving fusion. He's got lots, so check out Jordy and uh, Uncle Kevin will have his page in the next couple of weeks, hopefully. And Douglas Fur is going to have a Block Brothers page in the next couple of years. Um, <laughs> he's got his headphones on. So, yeah, my name's Ryan Cook. You, thanks for watching. And uh, this was a hopefully a, help, a helpful beginner's owl for you, Jordy Johnson, and everybody else. Nah, it looks good. So we'll get his finished. And uh, here we go. Here's a quicker look at it. Boom. So you just try to keep it balanced. Like instantly I can see that this is a little lower than this. Right? You can nitpick your work. But luckily that's up higher. And that down lower. So maybe it makes a bit of sense. But you're just having fun. Not going crazy. Texture and chainsaw. All chainsaw basically. Aside from the eyes and the beak. I got to finish this, but whatever. This is just for me messing around. So Jordy's got his, and that's a great start. Good block out, followed the form, did the feathers cool. And that's what's cool about this whole thing. As you guys, when you're carving, just make it your own. You know, like don't, uh, don't stress. Don't stress if it doesn't work. Don't stress if you mess it up the first time. Like honestly, it's all good because... We're all just here to learn. I mean, this is not right in any kind of way, but it's fun. It'll sell, and that's what we're here to do is, uh, you know, be a carving community, all support each other, be friends, and, yeah, that's it. So definitely if you like this, if you're here right now, smash the like button because that will help me. And uh, if you're new to the page, thanks for checking me out. My name's Ryan Cook, and we'll see you guys later. Love you. Yoo! Yoo yeah, why not? 400. 
Sure, Jim. I don't know, 350. Sure, Spike says four. Why not? Okay. <sighs> All right, that was a good haul. Hour and a half. Saw Valley. Yeah. <laughs> Later, guys. Jack, you rascal. You're such a.